You're watching ABC 7 News at 11. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Adam Cellini. Topping our news tonight, 17 days after 17 people were killed in a school shooting at a Parkland, Florida high school. State senators met for a rare Saturday session to discuss a massive school safety bill. Democrats proposed several amend amendments which were almost all rejected by the Republican-led Senate. The Florida Senate debate for school safety and gun regulations in the wake of the Parkland school shooting started at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Lawmakers discussing dozens of amendments in the 100-page bill, which includes provisions to boost security and mental health programs in schools. Among changes, Democrats proposed a two-year moratorium on the sale of AR-15 rifles. The one strain that has been through all of these incidents has been a actual weapon called an AR-15. Many of you met with the students from Douglas down in Broward County, and I did too. This is their number one requirement. This is what they wanted. At one point, it appeared that amendment passed by a voice vote, but the motion was quickly reconsidered and reversed by a roll call vote. 17 yeas, 21 nays, Mr. President. The amendment is not adopted. Then an abrupt moment of silence for the 17 victims from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Please rise for a moment of silence and reflection. Republicans also rejected a motion to remove the school marshal program that will arm teachers after training. The bill does, however, now include a ban on bump stocks and a call to make mass shootings a second-degree felony. Bradenton's Bill Galvano expressed confidence in Saturday's progress. We had to start somewhere. We had to make those, those initial steps, and I believe that we have a, a balance with this bill. Sarasota's Greg Stubbe, who didn't vote yes on any of the bill's nine amendments Saturday, had this to say. Are you going to get hit on some portions of it because it's something that you do support? I mean, that's you've got to kind of take the entire piece of what the, the product is and vote based on what you feel comfortable voting on. Now, the session was extended from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. Tonight, the final vote on that bill won't happen until Monday, and the legislative session will end on Friday. The Senate also voting today to pass a proposal that would give firefighters, police officers, and other first responders worker, workers' compensation benefits for post-traumatic stress disorder. Right now, workers' comp benefits only cover physical injuries. A similar House bill is set for a final vote next week. Follow up now over that Delta NRA backlash. Tonight, Delta Airlines saying it lost a major tax break over a discount used by only 13 people. The Atlanta-based company says that's how many customers use its NRA discount. Delta scrapped that offer in the aftermath of the deadly school shooting down in Parkland, Florida, but the move angered some Republicans, uh, some Republican lawmakers in the state who took out a fuel exemption for Delta from a tax bill signed on Friday. That means the airline will have to pay tens of millions of dollars in extra fuel costs. More than a dozen other companies also distancing themselves from NRA, from the NRA, excuse me, after that shooting. A boater is safely back on land tonight after his 14-foot sailboat's mast collapsed two miles off of Casey Key. Palm Beach Gardens native Paul Friedman sending out an emergency distress call around 5 p.m. tonight after he was unable to anchor in six-foot seas and 30-mile-per-hour winds. Luckily, the Coast Guard responded, and they were able to tow him and his sailboat into the Crow's Nest Marina down in Venice. Other than some rough waters for boaters, it's been a pretty nice day here on the Sun Coast, but for the northeastern part of our country, it's been a different story. After a powerful storm hit, airports are experiencing delays and millions remain without power. And as ABC's Elizabeth Hur reports, many are mourning the lives of eight people who died from falling trees during the storm. The two-day monster nor'easter slamming the eastern seaboard from Georgia all the way up to Maine, causing widespread flooding. ABC's Gio Benitez witnessing the water's force. It's just about 12 noon here in Quincy, Massachusetts. That means it's high tide. And just take a look at the incredible force of the storm system, even as it leaves the area. The powerful storm leaving behind a trail of death and destruction. One of the victims, 
just six years old. The tree is pinned to a bunk bed. Anthony Hamilton was asleep on the top bunk when a tree crashed through his family's home. It was a, just a freak accident in the middle of the night that took the baby from us. More than a million homes still without electricity with power lines down everywhere, including this mess in Watertown, Massachusetts. The storm also proving to be a nightmare for travelers. So far, more than 4,000 flights have been canceled and around 7,000 delayed. Trains between Washington, D.C. and Boston completely shut down for a while with only limited service now restored. Out west, another winter storm dropped four feet of snow on the Sierra Nevada, triggering avalanches, one crashing down on five people near Lake Tahoe. We feel incredibly lucky, um, super stoked to be alive. Meanwhile, in a different avalanche in Squaw Valley, a snowboarder was killed. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. And no delays have been reported at to, uh, today at the Sarasota Bradenton International Airport as a result of that storm. Well, let's take it over to Wendy Ross with our first alert weather forecast today. And Wendy, feeling luckier than ever to be down here. Oh right my goodness, are we the fortunate ones? It is 60 degrees for us right now, and that is chilly compared to what we've experienced over the past several weeks. But we do have fair skies. We have dew point levels that are at 46 degrees right now, and that is really helping to keep us on the dry side or feeling dry out there. The winds are calm. They're coming in out of the north northeast at six miles per hour, and it doesn't matter where you go along the sun coast from Sarasota down through Bradenton and into Venice. We're looking at temperatures that are right around that 60 to 63 degree reading. And so everywhere around the state, we are looking at fair skies. There isn't a cloud out there, as you can see from Tallahassee all the way down through Key West. Things are looking very nice right now. And throughout the nighttime hours, we're going to see another cold night tonight. We've got our temperatures dropping down into the 50s. We could even see four tonight in some locations. That is a possibility. And we'll talk about the rest of this weekend in just a minute. Adam. All right, thank you very much, Wendy. Well, once the sun does come out tomorrow, if you're looking for something to do, you can once again travel back to the Old South during the Gamble Plantation's annual spring open house. From 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., you can go on a free tour of the Gamble Mansion and live demonstrations to give you a look back into the Civil War era. And parking is also free. And if you're heading to St. Petersburg or Tampa on Sunday, you should avoid the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, at least during the morning hours. The northbound lanes of the Skyway Bridge will be closed tomorrow from 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. for the inaugural Skyway 10K. The southbound portion of the Skyway Bridge will remain open, but only for southbound drivers. Anyone needing to travel north across the bridge will have to find a different route. The, that iconic bridge, which, which covers three counties, will serve as the setting for 7,000 people expected to race that 6.2 mile course. In a show of solidarity, dozens of motorcyclists lined the street along 14th Street West in Bradenton today. The group paying their respects to a friend who was killed, struck on his motorcycle, and while raising community awareness over the dangers motorcyclists face on our roadways every day. The group 941 Riders have done awareness rides in the past, reminding people to look twice for cyclists, uh, respect riders, and don't drink or text and drive. Motorcyclists do get a bad rap. I just want everybody to understand that we deserve the same amount of respect, the same amount of space, the same amount of courtesy that even motorists on the, on the road deserve. Um, we deserve the same amount of space on the road that, that even a car takes up. Um, I've had cars, you know, turn into my lane so close to me that we're now sharing lanes side by side. And, and it's just, we have to have the common respect for one another. Morrison says today's rally will be the first of many. The group plans to do this the first Saturday of every month. A Philadelphia man is being heralded a hero tonight after taking on not one, but three suspected armed robbers. And that whole thing caught on camera. Take a look at this. The three gunmen vaulting over a Pizza Hut counter, one shoving an employee. But instead of giving the robbers what they wanted, that worker fights back. The mindset of, you know, I got to do what I got to do. The camera capturing the image of two of those suspects checking their weapons, but the worker comes at them again, this time grabbing a metal stand and toppling it on top of them. They all take off 
empty handed. And while this case turned out well for the worker, law enforcement experts say resisting an armed criminal may not always be the best idea. Hollywood is mourning the loss of actor David Ogden Stiers. His agent says Stiers died at his Oregon home after battling bladder cancer. He's probably best known for playing Major Charles Emerson Winchester III on TV's MASH. Joining the show in 1977, he earned two Emmy nominations for his work on the series. And on the big screen, Stiers was a prolific voice for Disney, playing Cogsworth the Clock in 1991's Beauty and the Beast and Governor Ratcliffe in Pocahontas. Uh, uh, David Ogden Steers was 75. Still to come here on ABC 7 with an increase in shark activity off of Florida's coastline. What beachgoers need to know to keep both themselves and marine life safe from harm. Plus a program helping to teach the community how to preserve our coasts. Each day researchers make discoveries that bring us closer to the moment when all cancer patients can become survivors. Their progress is made possible with the help of clinical trials. Clinical trials are the brightest torch researchers have to light their way towards better treatments. Oh. And if you've been diagnosed with cancer, they may be your brightest ray of hope. Speak with your doctor and visit standuptocancer.org slash clinical trials to learn more. Together, we can stand up for all of us. We all love our kids and want what's best for them. You have the power to help your kids learn to succeed in life every day. When you promote a love for learning at home, children build the skills they need to be ready for school. You can be their everyday hero. It's easy. Just text Everyday Hero to 77453 for simple learning tips. All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you and for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! I'm Anne. I'm a scientist. Recycling takes a team. Why don't you let me and me help you out? Everyone plays a part. Don't trash. I love taking stuff apart and building new things out of it. What could be treasure? Pal's my most advanced android. <gasps> this is awesome. You haven't seen anything yet. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Thanks to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, what was once impossible is happening today for thousands of patients with blood cancer. I live. I live. I live. I live. I live. He lives. Because of the research done by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in the battle against blood cancer. If you had a chance to support the research that is saving lives, what would you do? My life motto is keep moving. And as hard as it was when my husband passed away, I knew I had to keep doing what I love. Oops, coming. But I needed help, help with my insurance, and that's what the NAIC provides. They have resources to help you and your family make the best decision, and they'll help you to keep moving forward, just like me. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. Every Wednesday from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. at the main pavilion at Siesta Key Beach all month long with a special Saturday class on the 24th. Well, some snowbirds are getting ready to travel back up north, but they won't be alone. As ABC 7's Erica Jackson reports, a few species of sharks are also heading up Florida's coastline as water temperatures get warmer. It's just some beautiful weather out here, so uh, we're trying to take advantage of it before it gets too hot. Don't mistake Colin Snowball and its friends for tourists. 
Saturday marks the start of spring break for colleges like University of Florida. And some locals like Snowball can spot visitors from a mile away. We always joke when uh, us locals see the people in the water right now when it's so cold that they've got to be from up north. So uh, definitely it's a little chillier than we're used to here. Well, the weather's changing, uh, people are migrating, sharks are migrating. Moat Marine scientist Bob Huter knows Sarasota beaches will be filled with spring breakers in the coming days and the chilly water filled with black tip sharks. Now, this is a time for some of these warmer water sharks, such as the black tip shark, to come in uh, from where they've been offshore and, and in places farther to the south and start moving north. Dr. Huter jokes the sharks are scratching their heads after cold water temperatures in January and an extremely warm February. Now they're making their way north, some swimming past North Carolina. Huter says it's unlikely beachgoers will see the sharks in the Gulf because the water isn't deep until 100 miles offshore. Well, there's lots of room for the sharks to do their thing and, and feed on, on our side so they're not quite so concentrated close to the, the beach here. The sharks will stay in the Gulf throughout the summer, swimming away from the shore to colder waters as the temperatures grow hotter. Huter says the species' massive migration is a success story of conservation. These sharks were depleted at one time, and this is a species that's very healthy. These thousands of sharks in aggregations is a very good sign that we've rebuilt the population. And another good sign is that we live on the Gulf side of the state, so <laughs> yes. most of those sharks will be moving out in the deeper waters, is I am our understanding. I'm so glad. Yes, he said 100 miles. Yeah, I want to count that. Maybe a few trickle <laughs> in, but not quite like the Atlantic, clearly. Well, and, and it's going to be a kind of a rougher day tomorrow if you, ha if you are heading out to the beach because we do have small craft exercising caution. Those advisories have gone up. But the Gulf water temperature is too cold for me. <laughs> I, I, it's too cold for me. I'm a Florida girl. Of course it is. But if you had the opportunity to be outdoors today, then good for you because it was gorgeous. Probably our ten, one of our 10 best days uh, that we uh, experienced so far this year. As you can see, it was just an absolutely gorgeous day. A little bit of breeze that came on through during the day. But for the most part, we did not see a cloud in the sky. It is so dry out there, and that is going to continue continue as this high pressure system to our north up in Canada is helping to just drive in that dry air and take a look at these dew points because that is really telling the story especially across northern and central Florida we're looking at the dew points that have risen just a little bit right now but we're still seeing them in the 30s at this hour and that driving force of dry air is covering the entire state from Tallahassee all the way down through Key West. There isn't a place in the state that isn't experiencing this dryness. And of course, we're not looking at any clouds forming either. So it's an absolutely beautiful night outside. A little on the chilly side. Temperatures today did get up to 78 degrees for the daytime high. So 53 was the overnight low. And right now we're back down into the 60s. 55 is normally where we should be for the overnight period. 75 for the daytime high. And this morning's temperatures were in the 40s to our north, 50s across central Florida, and we're going to see pretty much the same thing taking place for tomorrow, but some places, or later on tonight, the overnight time period, could get down into the 40s into the 40s, so it could be even chillier to, to the start of the day tomorrow. So very dry weather sitting on top of us right now. We have the lower, uh, the, the lows will be in the upper 40s for the overnight time period for some locations. And then tomorrow is going to be another gorgeous day. Sunny and mild. Temperatures will be in the low to mid 70s. And right now we're looking at 60s across the area. Some places now starting to report temperatures in the 50s as you can see. But along the coastline at this point still looking at some 60s. So it's going to be on the chilly side once again. Those winds are being driven down from the north down to the south and then we're going to see them switching around mostly out of the north northeast and then what we'll see is down to the south our, our, our winds 
winds have finally begun to taper off as well. But again, those clouds stay away, and we're not looking at any cloud cover along the west coast of Florida all the way through Sunday. And then along the east coast, we'll get a couple of clouds coming on through, the possibility of a passing cloud on the west coast, but we're not expecting the rain. That comes Tuesday night. So what we're looking at are small craft exercise caution. Winds will be out of the north at 15 to 20 knots for boaters, seas two to four feet, and then it will be sunny out on the bay and inland waters. Temperature reading of about 73 degrees at the beach. So overnight on Tuesday, that's going to be our best chance for rain with a 60% chance and then a 40% chance on Wednesday. Thursday morning, we'll also see the rain, and because of a cold front coming from California, we are going to get back to cooler weather once again on Thursday. We're going to finish out this weekend just beautifully with a temperature high, 73 degrees, and lots and lots of sunshine. Adam? All right, thank you, Wendy. We got a couple spring training debuts coming up next in sports. What if you had a medical emergency away from home? My chest hurts. I can't breathe. What you need is Mobile Help, America's premier mobile medical alert system. Most systems only work at home, but with Mobile Help, you get help outside the home with coverage nationwide on one of the largest cellular networks at the press of a button. Call the number on your screen for a free full color brochure. We'll send you everything you need, including this base station, the patented mobile device, and the waterproof pendant and wrist button. You can also add the fall button that automatically detects falls and signals help. Call today and receive a risk-free 30-day trial. There is no equipment to buy and no long-term contract. For a limited time, you will also receive a free emergency key box with your planned purchase. Remember, mobile help keeps you safe coast to coast. Call 1-800-916-8638. That's 1-800-916-8638. our kids and want what's best for them. You have the power to help your kids learn to succeed in life every day. When you promote a love for learning at home, children build the skills they need to be ready for school. You can be their everyday hero. It's easy. Just text Everyday Hero to 77453 for simple learning tips. In life after the military, it's our duty as veterans to have each other's back. I'm retired Colonel Greg Gatson, and it's my mission to help you get the benefits and services you've earned. If you need to file a VA claim, remember these important steps. Submit an online claim through ebenefits.va.gov. Work with an accredited veteran service organization or VSO. And if you need to attend a VA claim exam, please go. Visit this website to learn what to expect. Here's today's job of the day. ABC7 is seeking a multimedia local sales manager. Strong new business, digital, and OTT background required. Visit mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to apply. Now, sports. Race fans have a few more weeks to watch 2017 All-Star Corey Dickerson before he heads off to his new home in Pittsburgh. The 28-year-old outfielder made his spring training debut with the Pirates in Bradenton today. Dickerson was traded last month after a breakout season with the Rays in which he led the MLB in batting average. Heading into the All-Star break, he went 0-2 with that deep fly ball to right center. In the field, uh, just 
checking your timing down, seeing multiple pitches, um, and work deep in counts. Pirates, uh, Pirates starter Ivan Nova had a good day against the Phillies, throwing three innings, striking out two, and giving up one run in the 4-3 victory. Meanwhile, in Lakeland, Rays fans getting a glimpse of one of the prospects they acquired in all of those trades earlier this year, left-handed pitching prospect Anthony Banda threw his first and only inning so far this spring training, striking out one and giving up no hits. Banda was part of the Steven Souza Jr. trade. The 24-year-old admitted he was nervous and might have helped his impressive velocity up to 97 miles per hour at some points during that outing. You got the emotions, you first time out, you're fresh, uh, new management, new team, you're going to want to go out and, you know, obviously impress like with your best stuff. Um, as thus right now, um, obviously I got more work to do. Banda was called up for a few starts last year for the Diamondbacks, posting a 7-3-2 ERA in five outings. More to come here on ABC7, stay with us. Mark Zupan, part of the U.S. Paralympic rugby team. In my game, movement is everything. I get frustrated when my move is blocked, especially when that guy has no right to be there, even just for a minute. I love a challenge, but I don't like to play this game every day. A message from the United Spinal Association. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them, and she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. Call now, 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. We all love our kids and want what's best for them. You have the power to help your kids learn to succeed in life every day. When you promote a love for learning at home, children build the skills they need to be ready for school. You can be their everyday hero. It's easy. Just text Everyday Hero to 77453 for simple learning tips. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. Hi, I'm Stephanie Webb. And I'm Ray Collins. Flooding is often an issue across the state and also here on the Sun Coast. We're going to tell you what Sarasota County officials are trying to do to help update the local flood plan. That's Monday morning on Good Morning Sun Coast. John? So now that a big ridge of high pressure is built in, what's it mean for the work week ahead? We'll talk about that in detail bright and early Monday. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. I'll be right back. Get breaking news alerts focused on the Sun Coast. Download the ABC7 News app. The Florida Lottery winning numbers are sponsored by Frontier Fios. Well, police will be out in force during Sunday's Oscars ceremony in Hollywood. Variety magazine says more than 500 officers will be deployed around the Dolby Theater. The Academy Awards venue uh, will also be surrounded by multiple security rings. The operation will include the FBI, firefighters, private security guards, and police helicopters. The LAPD 
is being extra cautious because of last year's mass shooting in Las Vegas where a gunman opened fire from a hotel uh, room. The officials say they are not aware of any specific threats against the 90th Academy Awards. And we now know who will be presenting the Best Actress Oscar at Sunday's Academy Awards. Jennifer Lawrence and Jodie Foster will be doing the honors. And Jane Fonda and Helen Mirren will announce Best Actor. And don't forget, you can catch all of that Oscars action right here on ABC7 tomorrow night. Red carpet arrivals begin at 6.30 and the ceremony will start around 8 o'clock. Oh, I love watching the Oscars. I just do. I just think it's so much fun to see the dresses and the gowns and the actors. Sure. And Oh, it's just It's a very big to-do. Yes, I've it heard. is a big to-do. And I'm just going to show you a quick peek at the morning tomorrow. It's going to be chilly for the start, but we warm up to a high of 73, so that's going to be pretty Good nice. luck, runners out there. <laughs>